Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM and the ID51. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. And by ting.com. Ting is a new mobile phone service that makes sense. Save money with Ting, pay for what you use, it doesn't require a contract, and you get unlimited devices on one pooled plan. To save $25 on your first Ting device, visit hamnation.ting.com. This is Ham Nation, episode number 80, January 9th, 2013. Interest your wife in ham radio. Hello, everybody, from Pleasant Hope, Missouri tonight. It's Bob Heil, K9EID, and a whole host of wonderful people here on Ham Nation. You've tuned into a, a show about ham radio, having fun, and making communication work sometimes. <laughs> George Thomas, how are you down in Mississippi? Oh, doing fine down here, Bob. It's a little wet, maybe not as wet where you are, and uh, my my shirt's about to moray me to death here, but I, I think I can make it through the hour. <laughs> well, it's beautiful here today, and it's uh, going to be up to like 60 in the weekend. It's, it's 50 out there right now tonight. It's really nice. Amanda, how are you doing out in Colorado? You, did, did you get your truck fixed? You, your fixed truck was really crushed. It, did you get a new truck? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, my Jeep was scrapped, so uh, the insurance company got that, but I got a 2007 beautiful four-door blue uh, F-150 leather and all of it. And uh, no antennas yet, but Jeff's working on it. Okay. And it wasn't pink. I, I like your pink. That's cool. And uh, speaking of pink, check out the tie from Louisiana. Hi, Don. How you doing? Hey, you know, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm lockstep in, in solidarity with our, our girl Amanda tonight. My wife gave me this pink tie for for Christmas. And I said, you know, I could, uh, I've got any number of shirts in there. I'm, I'm going to doll it up. And especially, you know, since Gordon in here tonight, someone has to be the fashion plate. So I'm taking the <laughs> fall for it. How are you tonight? Good to see you. I'm good. I'm good. I just got off the road driving over from Illinois. Uh, Gordon is at CES and uh, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to make it in here. We're going to try to bring him in with his cell phone, but cell phones in Las Vegas when there's 200,000 of them that work, they're good sometimes. So, uh, John, were we able to make contact with uh, Julian and, and Gordo? We did. We listened to them for a while, and their audio quality was pretty spotty. Okay. Yeah, that's what we figure. We're not going to be able to do that, right? Well, we have plenty of things to do. Uh, one of the things that we want to uh, tell you about, first of all, I, I, I want to tell you about next week. You've got to mark next week down and don't miss it. Have all of your friends, anybody in amateur radio has got to see next week. We're going to bring uh, Nick Tusa and George Meyer in. These are two central electronics experts, and they're going to give us uh, a, a really nice interview about the birth of single sideband uh, on amateur radio bands. And it's, it's really something. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, all this stuff you see up behind me, we're going to turn that on and we're going to show you how we have to null the carrier, how we get rid of the other sideband, what we actually make that thing do when we put it on the air. Today, we push a button and it says single sideband. There, we had to make a single sideband signal out of AM, and we actually tune in. We're going to show you how to do that. But anyway, don't miss next week. It's going to be a great history lesson, and uh, you're going to you're going to really enjoy these guys. But uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of new things going on, and uh, w one of them that I'm really in tune with, and I just got to see a little bit of it, is the new ICOM. And uh, George, you've had the uh, uh, the new 7100 in your hands for a while. So 
let us know what you found out about this new, uh, great new little ICOM radio coming up. Well, Bob, it is a nice radio. Uh, Ray dropped by over the holidays and spent some time with uh, Tommy and I here. And we looked at the IC7100, the new touchscreen uh, mobile, or uh, I suppose you could uh, use it as a nice base station, too. And also at the uh, uh, new 51A Handy Talkie. But we're going to look here tonight at the IC7100. Did you have? Did you get to hook it up and have, uh, put it on the air? We didn't actually get it on the air. We just hooked it up to a power supply and uh, played with the touch screen, looked at some of the uh, very intuitive ways that you can control it. It's it's a completely different way of uh, of operating a radio. I did not know that it was going to be as simple as it was. When I saw it, I was thinking, well, you know, why would you need a touch screen? But they've done some really interesting things with it. Um, as far as selecting frequency and modes and and all of those things, it's it's so much easier. You, uh, Ray asked us a question: How how would you change frequency? And we just looked at the radio, and it was natural just to reach over there and touch the frequency. And and there you go. Same thing with uh, changing yeah. modes and uh, a lot of other options on it. It's really nice looking little radio, and they've done one thing that I have never seen before. They now have a speaker right up in the uh, control head of the radio. So you don't necessarily have to have an external speaker if you've got the rig under your seat and you're running the head up on the dashboard. You've got your speaker right there. Uh, also, like uh, so many of the other ICOM rigs, the uh, microphone connector's right there on the remote head, too, so you don't have to stretch out that cord and get it under the <laughs> seat or, or wherever you're going to. 32 foot of mic cord running from wherever to wherever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's see if John gets those uh, the videos back up. Uh, before we do that, um, Amanda, are, are you planning to put a bunch of new radios in your truck or are you replacing uh, new radios or are you going to use the same ones that were in the uh, one that got damaged? Well, we were um, able to salvage the Kenwood DM710. So, and that's a very expensive radio. So I'm glad that we saved that. And uh, after that, we're going to look forward to possibly putting some APRS um, equipment, which would only take the AV map if you have the D710 in there. And uh, maybe some 900 megahertz. You never know. There is a ton of space in there. So uh, yeah. it, the sky is the limit. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to that. So you'll be wanting to do some uh, some video and uh, let us see how you put all that together or how Jeff got it put together. I want to see him drill a hole in the top of that new truck. What do you think, Don? You want to go up there with your drill and drill a hole? You, you good at drilling holes in a new car, Don? No, oh, no. I'm, 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 that's scary to me. I, I, I think, no, no, not, you know, the drill can walk around and everything. What you need is a chisel and a big hammer. You just pow, pop one hole right at the top <laughs> of it and you're done. Jim uses a yeah. torch. Yeah, a torch. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, we would expect well, nothing, nothing else. Yeah, the torch is the, that's Tommy's way of doing it, right, George? You just well, uh, well, kind of yeah. big hole in the top. Of the yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's Jimmy's way of doing it. Actually, we've always ragged on Tommy. He's been using those glass mount antennas for so many years that we finally shamed him into actually mounting something on his truck. Yeah, I outgrew <laughs> those a long time ago. Oh gosh. Oh, that's really something. Well, let's see. Did uh, John, did you get the video uh, uh, of the 7100 or uh, any of that? You got that going, John? It'll be downloaded in 22 minutes. Okay, in 22. Huh? Okay. Hey, did do you have those slides from the uh, ham fest that we'd sent up? Yes. Let's run those. Yeah, let's run those. Uh, I was really happy. Uh, we had a ham fest here in Springfield, usually very small. Boy, it uh, turned out to be great. And uh, this is the Ozark Mountain uh, uh, ham fest. Uh, there's a, a bunch of our uh, our guys that we talked to on 3875 and six meters, local local guys, Houston, and, uh, Dan and the guys. And that's old Al Gallo. There's in zero SAP. And as you can see, some of the tables got sold off early and blank spots here and there. That was great. And there's Gene and Galen, WB0W. Associated Radio is here from Kansas City with a lot of gear. 
And uh, boy, they had some really cool gear. It was a beautiful helicraft receiver that uh, that somebody had for sale. But what was really cool, they had another room, and it was model airplanes, guys that were doing model aircraft stuff. That was a crystal radio. Uh, we're going to get into that one of these uh, one of these shows. And this was a thing we took apart and found out it was a linear. We didn't know what it was. Homebrew from probably 40, 50 years ago, pair 811s. Homebrew. There's another uh, a view of another one of the aircraft. That was really cool. These are all guys that use, uh, they're using 2.4 gigs now to control these. So I thought it was a great marriage of, of putting... Uh, uh, some of the amateur radio frequencies and that together. Now, here comes the good one. We should have a contest, George, about what that is. Hold that hold that slide a minute there, John. Uh, George, do you know what that is? I actually do, but the first time I ever saw one, I didn't have a clue. But I, I know what it is. <laughs> well, now. I can tell... I can tell you I got first hand on it because that's how I took my novice license, my technician license. That is what they call an instructograph. And if you look close on it, you'll see there's little holes in those rolls of paper, like an old player piano. And up at the top, they can see the, the little uh, uh, contact bar. And that's how they, the FCC, did the tapes for their testing. Uh, we could rent it. Uh, one of those from Walter Ash to practice our code because we didn't have a lot of things like we had today. And I was amazed to see that at the ham fest. I don't know if it's sold or not, but uh, uh, that's the instructograph that we used back in the early days uh, for learning code. And that's how the FCC gave the code. Thanks for holding that, John. That was cool. <laughs> and that uh, Leo was there. Look at that. <laughs> Don, that's Leo's car, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. The new I'm Ford sure that's Escort. That's not Amanda's new car. It's the right color. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I, I just thought, but yeah, I said, well, gosh, Leo Laporte's here because they showed his car. <laughs> it was sitting out front. I'm going, okay. <laughs> Look at that car again. I mean, this, this is really something. This guy... I think he's from St. Louis. He shows up every once in a while at some of the uh, fests, and it's just got antennas and radios. I couldn't take a picture. It was locked, but th there's no way you can sit in any of the seats because they're filled up with radios. <laughs> Is that the same guy that shows up at Dayton every year? Or, uh, I think the guy at Dayton looks like I think he may have like four or five times more antennas on there than the guy at Dayton, but there's a guy that shows up at Dayton yeah. every year that, that is a porcupine car as well. But yeah, and it, it's a little newer car, but uh, yeah, I, think so, yeah. I don't know. We, we get we get those guys from Mississippi together. They might put something like that together. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But what, what a great time we had too. at the fest here in Springfield. And it, it's one of those things that we're seeing some of these ham fests are growing in size. And, uh, boy, that's, that's just great uh, to see that happen uh, because there for a few years that wasn't happening. So... Away we go. And, John, what did you say? Okay. Well, George, let's uh, see what you guys did. Go ahead and take it away, George, and uh, tell us a little more about this great 7100. Okay. I, I didn't hear John if he said he had the video ready or not. But, uh, yeah, the 7100s, uh, I think uh, Julian played with one of those a while back. It's a really nice rig. It's not going to replace the 7,000. The, the 7,000 is still in the lineup and, and still a really nice rig. That's what I've got in my mobile. But uh, Tommy and I were, were both kind of uh, interested in this 71. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a nice radio. Now, Tommy, George has already passed the test. How would you change the bands on this? Well, I don't see anything that says band on it, but just kind of by instinct, I guess you would touch the frequency. Look at there. Okay, George, let's look at changing modes. Changing modes. Well, let's see. What mode am I on now? SCW reverse. LSB. Go ahead and hit it again. Look in the lower left-hand corner. DV. Yes, sir. I'm I'm on HF. Yes, sir, you are. DV. Is that D star? Yes, sir. On HF? On HF, built in. One of the interesting things, you notice when I hit the top how this Yeah. 
Well, I hope I don't take us out of focus on the other one, but on the bottom. Ah, okay. Oh, it's steady at the feet. Nice. Now, you can still tilt it over, but it's a lot harder to do so. Now, yeah, you've, got, you've got tuning steps on this, and you were talking about one indent. Mm -hmm. There's a one hertz tuning resolution on this. Wow. Any ideas on how to get to that? Well, uh, first off, I would just touch right there, but that didn't do it. There's a two, the second step to it. There you go. Hold down. The free tuning. Yep. One hertz at a time. You notice there's a speaker on the back of it. Right, yeah, and so that means I don't have to necessarily have an external speaker on this thing if I've got the rig under the seat or, nope. or remotely located. There's also a jack for a key. Yeah, let's, let's look at the rear here. So it's just got a standard uh, RJ45 here Yes. As, as a remote head. RJ45 for the remote head and RJ45 for the microphone. Mm -hmm. You have a 3.5 millimeter for external speaker or headphones mm -hmm. and a 3.5 millimeter for your key. Now with, with the graphical display, there's some real cool things that they've done as well. The, the controls, some of the controls are touch screen, some of them are from the knobs on the side. So we want to use that mic gain that mm -hmm. Bob Heil talks about setting for his headphones. That's the center adjustment. Now you can see it'll take forever to go from the low end to the high end just right. by turning. But if I make a snap change, the yeah. software knows to increment so and go faster. So it's looking at the velocity of the knob for coarse and then slow turning for fine tuning. 100 watts on HF and 6, 50 on 2, and I believe 35 on 440. So this is mic and RF power. Speed and pitch. Oh, that's for your CW. Yes. P amp, that's an ATT, that's a preamp and attenuator. Yep, and then you got doctor mode. Doctor mode, I could always use oh, awesome. a little doctor. Uh-oh. Now Tommy's going to be familiar with what that DR mode is. The DR mode is actually the DR mode in D-stop. Where you can find the repeater. Yes. Oh. Now, with the repeater, you've got it, it makes it easier for D-star from where you're talking to to where you want to talk to. But the radio does not have GPS built into it. You can put an external GPS unit to it. And once you get your coordinates fed into it, it has the near repeater function just like on your 31. Nice. What is near repeater? Near repeater will take your GPS coordinates and tell you what D-star repeaters are in your local area. But we'll go ahead and exit out of the DR mode. Set. Then your main set menu. So this, that's basically just all the default functionality for the radio. You pretty much set that for the most part and leave it. Yes. But it's grouped instead of like some of the radios out there that just has a huge laundry list of functions. This is grouped together based on what it it adjusts. Tone control. Tone control. This is one thing you do not have in your 7000 is your transmit tone control. And then it's grouped by SSB, AM, FM, as well as the digital voice. Hmm. And you can set your transmit bandwidth levels as well as the amount of bass and amount of treble. We have on here the auto-tune, uh, there's two different tuners available for it. There's the AH4 for a whip or a long wire or the AT180 for a coax fed antenna. Some of the other third party antenna tuners go off the antenna tune jack. That would be the same button that you would use there. I'm ready to give it the ultimate test here. Let's just go back to the, uh, to the main screen here. 1910.70. There's one see. other thing I want to show you. On your 7000, you've got dual manual notches. Right. This one only has one. You can still change the width of it, and you can tune where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But you've only got one single notch filter. Okay. So my 7000 still has at, at least one thing. It's still a real nice. cool box. Oh, it is. And, uh, 
I, I have been tickled to death with it. And for all those that are questioning, is this replacing it? No, it's not. One thing we haven't talked about yet was the back of the rig. Yeah. That's now, a lot of connectors, right? There's a couple of them that I'd call magical connections. This one right here. USB. It's a mini USB, mini USB port. That does the audio as well as rig control. Same as uh, 7200 then. Different, different connection form, but same concept. Mm -hmm. Another microphone connection, so you can either put it to the head of the radio or to the body. Mm -hmm. We have a, a data jack for packet or digital mode mm -hmm. uh, operation on VHF and UHF. The accessory port where you can use for your different data modes. But what a lot of people are doing is going back to that one with the sound card built into it. You just use your sound card modes. Now, we didn't really see this before, but this is an SD card slot. What all can you do with that? Oh, that opens up a whole new world. So you put an external GPS unit on it. You can have the radio breadcrumb and save your path for your GPS logger. Mm -hmm. Your memory channels, your memory settings, your digital voice gear. Also a, a digital voice recorder on it as well. Oh, so it will do that? Yes. So Bob, what do you think about that radio? Uh, I, oh, I was might. really thrilled when I saw it uh, at Universal. It, it, it's just one of those things that you would like to always have the uh, and that's what's there it's taken the best of several of their radios to me it's a pro 3 uh, inside a, a small box with some additional things and i love the touch screen i i, I knew somebody was about to do that with all of the the, the phones that we have out there today but um I'm, I'm happy to see it. I think it's going to be a real successful radio, and I'm anxious to get it on an antenna and play, but you know it's going to be good. It'll be at least good, as good, if not better, than the 7000. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, when I first heard about it, I was thinking, well, you know, touchscreen, that's cool, but uh, after I played with it, yeah, that is cool. You know, it makes it yeah, so much it, easier to operate. You just, it, it seems natural, the, the things you touch to, to do the operation you want. Yeah, it's it looks like they've be done super. their homework on well, it. It really does. It, it, yeah. Well, they. It, I think, Don, that they listen to all of us. What do you think? I mean, they've taken all of our ideas and put them together, don't you think, Don? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I really like, uh, I'd be anxious to see how the touchscreen works in a mobile environment because I've got my 7000 in my Jeep and, you know, with a, with a, a five-speed and the clutch and, and everything else and plus just trying to hold the Jeep on the road and the windy, I, you know, it, it gets kind of tedious. I love the display on the 7000, but I could see that, that radio being right at home, right up on the dashboard of my Jeep. I can really, really see how that would simplify things Man. in the cockpit, so to speak. I, I, I like that. And I like the fact that it's got the SD card and and all the other stuff, and the and the uh, and the D Star for HF. I really think that's cool as that can be. Yeah, that's great. Okay, well, George, thanks a lot for you and Tommy to get that all together and uh, worked out good with Ray being there. So we got a little uh, a little preview before uh, it's really hitting the market. Do you know when it's going to happen? Uh, I'm not sure of an exact date on it. You know, they're uh, waiting for FCC approval. That's the only thing that's holding it up. I did pick up one of these, though, over the holidays, Bob. This is um, a 4.3-inch backup camera monitor for a car, and uh, it's got composite video input to it. It was only like $20, and I'm going to put that with my 7000 and set it up on the dashboard so I can operate in Gordo's head-up mode there because I like the radio <laughs> down low where I don't have to take my arm off the armrest to, to spin the dial. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. That's great. All right. All right. Well, um, let's go back down to Don. Don, you've got a couple of things. Let's uh, kick off Newsline and see what else is happening in the wonderful world of ham radio. Why don't we do that? Let's go ahead and go to the Newsline video, and then we'll uh, talk a little more about ICOM. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 1,847, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, January 9, 2013. The NRL has filed a petition for rulemaking requesting the establishment of a domestic amateur radio allocation at 472 to 479 kilohertz. 
The league's request calls for a power limit of 5 watts effective isotropic radiated power, with only 1 watt to be permitted in certain specific locations. The ARRL took this action for the FCC to follow up on the actions of the 2012 World Radio Communications Conference now, rather than waiting several years as was the case with WRC 07. Telecommunications administrations around the world have been fairly quick to make the spectrum available to their nation's ham radio communities, with Ireland the latest to adopt the new allocation, and South Africa looks to be next. Although this event is still some eight months away, we hear that the leading countries pre-registered for the next International Lighthouse and Lightship Weekend are Germany and Australia, followed by the USA and England. In fact, a total of 110 pre-registrations have been received from 26 countries, even though the next International Lighthouse and Lightship Weekend doesn't take place until August 17th and 18th. More about this fun event is online at www.illw.net. Registration is now open for the 2013 International DX Convention to be held this year at the Visalia Convention Center in Visalia, California. Jim Dameron in 8 TMW. According to planners, the move to the convention center gives the show 17 meeting rooms and two boardrooms, which will allow them to put together several concurrent presentations. Also, the exhibit hall can easily handle up to 100 vendors, and there will be banquet facilities for up to 900 attendees. 2013 marks the 64th year of this event that will be held April 19th through the 21st. For more details, visit www.dxconvention.org or www.dxconvention.com on the World Wide Web. Scientists at the Wake Forest University have created a new type of light bulb that promises to be just as efficient as LED equivalents, but without any of the drawbacks. Skeeter Nash in 5ASH. The new field-induced polymer electroluminescent bulbs, or FIPEL for short, produce light when an electric current is passed through its nano-engineered plastic layers. The team says that the new type of bulbs are malleable, allowing them to take any shape like compact fluorescent lamps. They also won't shatter like traditional bulbs, nor will they generate the same hum or flicker. The inventor of FIPEL is Dr. David Carroll. He believes that his new solution is superior to LED bulbs because there is a limit to how much brightness you can get out of them. If you run too much current through an LED, they can short out and melt. Not only that, the light generated by FIPEL bulbs is closer to natural sunlight, unlike the bluish tint generated by LEDs. Any worries about longevity are seemingly put to rest. Dr. Carroll claims to have had a field-induced polymer electroluminescent prototype lamp working in his laboratory for almost a decade. The research team says that a corporate partner is interested in producing the new bulbs at scale, with first run expected sometime this year. The Weather Radio Listener's newsletter net, hosted by Gordon Maybe, VA3 WXA, out of Toronto, Canada, takes place every Saturday evening at 8 p.m. Atlantic, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on IRLP Reflector 9034 and Echo Link Node 223557. The net carries information about weather radio and the CanWarn service. It also includes weather warnings and notices of any power outages across Canada. The sponsors say they're trying to make this a cross-Canada net to include all the provinces and territories. They're also looking for stations from Quebec to participate. For more information about the net, go to the Maritime Amateur website. That's maritimeamateur.ca and click on CanWarn. Once there, click on CanWarn News and you'll find articles about the net. Congratulations to Amateur Radio Newsline's editor Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF. He was honored recently for his volunteer work by Cedars Sinai Hospital. Since 2009, Bill has videotaped the monthly social gatherings at the hospital. And another of the Newsline staff will be featured on the weekly Newsline Net, heard on the Echo Link Do Drop In conference server. This time, Jim Dameron in 8TMW. You're invited to drop in and catch me talking about. Well, whatever they ask me about, it might be my career in broadcasting, stage career, amateur radio involvement. I don't have a pre-list of questions, so it will be a surprise to you and me both. Again, that's the Amateur Radio Newsline Net, Saturday, January 12th, 2100 hours Eastern Standard Time. I'll be there as the special guest in ATMW. I hope to see you there. Again, that's the Amateur Radio Newsline Net, Saturday, January 12th, 2100 hours Eastern Standard Time, 0200 UTC, Sunday the 13th, to meet Jim Dameron, N8TMW. You'll find it on the Dewdrop In Echo Link conference server, node number 355800. Both Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF, and I were recently featured on the net, and my Q&A session went for nearly an hour and a half. It was great fun, and we thank them for having us. 
And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news, brought to you each and every week for 35 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. And that was a great time on the Dewdrop In conference server last uh, Saturday night. I just, I had the best time. Uh, and like I said, it went for like an hour and a half, and uh, we just we just had the best time. So uh, check out the Newsline Net uh, Saturday night on uh, on Echo Link. Bob, back to you. Well, first of all, we have to really make sure that uh, all this of would... Amateur Radio congratulates Bill Pasternak. That was a wonderful thing that the hospital uh, gave uh, an award to him. He he does so much, and he's always just in the background, not waving his flag and. Uh, uh, we really need to wave his flag more because he really does so much and it's all voluntarily done. How many years has he been doing this, Don? 30? Uh, 35 and counting, yeah. We're in, we're in year 35 right now that he's, and we've never, ever, ever missed a week. Never missed a deadline yeah. for Newsline. Yeah, with Bill, period. He, so. Even from his hospital bed, he's typing out things for Newsline. He's <laughs> an amazing guy, yeah. That, and I've been involved with it since 95, and I'm just uh, I'm constantly amazed at, at, at the uh, the amount of energy that this man has. Not only Newsline, but, but with all the, the video stuff that he's done for the ARRL. And, of course, you know, he was an engineer at, at Fox 11 Television in Los Angeles for all these years. And the man knows everyone, uh, you know, and it just he's an amazing guy. He really is. He does. That's great. Congrats there uh, to you, Bill. Well, um, let's. Uh, there's a couple of new products from ICOM. Don, you've got some words on that. Why don't we do that right now? And uh, before we uh, jump back out to Colorado and uh, hear what Amanda's got for us tonight, let's let's hear what uh, ICOM's got on the shelf up there for us all. Well, we we saw the new uh, the new HF radio, new toys. And everyone likes the sound of new toys. Well, the wait is almost over. There have been some ID51 sightings over the last couple of weeks. And as you know, we love to talk about new electronic toys here on Ham Nation. The ID51 is an extremely exciting radio. Now, here's, here's what makes this handy talkie so exciting. First off, it's dual band. It's VHF, UHF, and it's 5 watts true dual band portable. The same user interface that they introduced with the ID31, which makes it extremely easy uh, it's a D-Star radio, and D-Star has a bit of a learning curve, but the 31 made things so much easier, and that's continued with the 51. There is something really special about this radio. It has an internal GPS. It's embedded. You don't have to add anything to it. It's already built in there. Now, that, in concert with the built-in D-Star repeater directory, again, that was introduced on the 31, just like on that new 7100 there, you can look up by your GPS position, D-Star repeaters that are near you, and they will load into memory. There's a lithium-ion battery pack. It will charge in three hours. No more of that having to plug in and, you know, well, I guess my radio will be ready in the morning. No, three hours and it charges. There's a broadcast receiver, broadcast radio, with an active band mute, and that means that you can listen to the ball game or to your favorite talk show or your favorite disc jockey or whatever while monitoring two receivers. So if you're if you're doing some kind of public service thing and you want to, you know, monitor the game or monitor uh, some other broadcast thing and still keep in touch with the people that you're doing your public service communications with it, well, you can do that with both VHF and UHF receivers while monitoring the, uh, the broadcast. And the broadcast will mute when activity is heard on either of the other two receivers. Also, free programming software is included with this. And look at the display on this. I mean, it's, it's a dot matrix display. It's, it's a beautiful radio all the way around. Free programming software comes with it. And I tell you, I've been an ICOM fan since I got licensed in 1995. I won an ICOM HF radio. It was the first thing I ever won at a ham fest. And it's just been the greatest thing I've had. That was a uh, ICOM 738. I've had three... 706 Mark II Gs. I've got my TS2000. I've got uh, uh, a couple of uh, two or three ICOM handy talkies. I've uh, I've had a couple of ICOM D Star handy talkies. ICOM is just it's it's quality all the way around, and you're not going to go wrong with ICOM. Believe me, it's 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 the best of the best. And make sure you visit icomamerica.com/hamnation. You can find out more about ICOM's new ID51 D Star dual band handheld. With built-in GPS, you can also enter ICOM's weekly drawing. You can get ICOM swag like T-shirts, hats, and everyone who registers will automatically be entered into a monthly grand prize drawing. You can win a free ICOM radio. How sweet is that? It's real easy. Go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation. 
You'll find all the official rules. Check out all of ICOM's previous drawing winners. Sign up, and good luck. And we thank ICOM for being a sponsor of Ham Nation. We're awful proud to have them on board, Bob. Yeah, we're we're also just proud of uh, of all of the different people that help us here on Ham Nation. We've got a new one too coming up in uh, a few minutes that uh, Leo's going to tell us about. And we're happy to have the sponsors because the uh, this show is is growing each week. We get so many requests from uh, all of you on different things, and we appreciate that. So be sure and send any of us. Uh, our calls are out there, and look up uh, QRZ. And keep us posted with. Uh, what you'd like to see and we, we love to bring you all this it's uh it's the greatest hobby in the world and uh for many of us it's our education so <laughs> we gotta keep it going <laughs> oh well amanda's got a a nice topic about amateur radio and uh, i guess that's why you're wearing pink tonight other than i think it's your favorite color but uh let's uh let's go out to colorado what's happening out there kiddo uh, thank you, Bob. Well, first of all, everybody was so interested in my truck that I uploaded it to Karsten there. So, Karsten, if you wouldn't mind showing the truck real fast, like, uh, everyone right. can see what I got. Ooh, hey, that's not so pink. <laughs> <laughs> I, they don't sell it in pink. They don't sell it in pink. I don't know what to do about that. So, thank you, Karsten, very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm real proud of it. Okay. Um, I wanted to go over the number one question that I'm always asked by all of our viewers here on Ham Nation. So let's talk about it. How do I get my wife more into radio? So um, first of all, if she's not already licensed, uh, do not under any circumstances ever, ever, ever pressure her to get her license. Um, instead, encourage, uh, try to use the compromise tactic. Tell her if she gets her license that you will go shopping with her once a month. Uh, awesome deal. Um, second, um, if that's not going to work, you know, no one knows her better than you do. So use something else, whether it be um, a new puppy, a new gun, whatever. Do it. And I think that you'll find her very responsive to see that you're giving a little to get a little. So also don't assume that she's going to learn ham radio the same way that you did. Whether it be you were able to just um, take uh, the quizzes online or read the ARRL book. Uh, don't assume that she's going to be able to do it the same way. Offer her every, every possibility there is. So whether it be Gordon West sending her out to California to learn how to do this, which we would all love, but um, no, seriously, um, get her any book that's going to help her find her way in ham radio. That's very important. And um, stand by her, you know, answer questions as she's going over uh, the quiz and such, uh, but walk away when she doesn't need your help anymore. That she will really appreciate that. And um, next, uh, you know, you go to some ham radio club meetings with you. We know that there's going to be other ladies there and she's going to have an opportunity to talk to them and ask questions or talk about her apprehension of getting her license and why she doesn't want to do it. And maybe some ladies can convince her otherwise. You just never know what's going to help out there. So um, now say she already has her license, but never talks on the radio and you would like to hear her on there. Uh, that it, you know, that's difficult because she probably feels uncomfortable talking on the radio, feels intimidated. So you got to take it easy on her. You got to go in baby steps. So let's um, maybe if there's a ham friend that she talks to in person a lot or gets along with well in person, maybe you can set up a QSO on a a simplex frequency that nobody uses around locally and um, just let them have a conversation. And of course you need to correct her mistakes, but please, please don't do it while she's talking on the radio. Um, I remember when I first started talking, I got so nervous that I, I wouldn't use my call sign or I would start talking before I keyed up, things like that. We all make those mistakes, but just correct her after the fact. 
if you do it while she's talking, whispering in the other ear, it will be the last time she ever uses that radio. Just trust me on this, you guys. And um, sorry, I lost my spot here. Um, I, I just remember some of my first conversations on local repeaters and boy, do I ever regret those? And I never want to think back to those times. I, I would just like her to be comfortable and uh, feel welcome and open to the conversation. So along with that, there's also um, the technical jargon that we use a lot. Let's try to keep those, um, those uh, kind of comments away from her because she's going to be, she's going to feel overwhelmed. So... <laughs> This is, this is a really good example, but I cannot stand to be called a YL or an XYL. So um, to me, it makes me feel like I'm not a real person, that I'm not actually in the subject's matter. It just, there's no name, no call sign mentioned. It makes me feel kind of um, an outcast. So make sure she feels comfortable with being called those things before you just use those in a sentence about her. Also, while we're talking about it, using the words rag chew, Elmer, ham, or XYL could cause a lot of problems. Make sure uh, that she is really okay with it and take extreme caution with it. Otherwise, you're seriously, you're gonna see her in the kitchen making a ham sandwich getting ready to turn on the TV to watch Elmer Fudd and thinking that you're going to be talking to your ex in some sort of way on the radio. So be very clear about what those terms mean or don't use them because she won't feel appreciated. And also on the line of um, comfortable, let's go over the ham shack. Okay, you guys, um, if she's licensed, that ham shack, is also hers. So let's make her feel part of it. Um, there's simple things that you can do. Make sure there, there's space for two people to sit there uh, to both be able to reach and use the radio. Very simple steps you can do here. Just rearrange some things. I'm left-handed and uh, Jeff is right-handed. So I always get this stupid mouse over, oops, over here on my right-hand side, which I'd rather use it on my left-hand side. So typically I move it, but I have another computer here to, uh, to chat with at the same time. So um, just uh, do those simple little things to make her feel welcome. Another thing is um, in the ham shack, if you have your call sign all over the walls and all of your QSL cards, which is perfect. That's great because that's what us hams are supposed to do. That's fine. But make sure that her call sign also has a presence somewhere in the ham shack so that she feels welcome. And um, one other thing, you know, just put a scented candle in there. Uh, instead of where your coffee cup goes, where she brings your fresh coffee to you, just put a scented candle that she likes in there. I think that she'll feel welcome and um, it will make her feel at home. So those are all good things to remember. Uh, next on the list here, um, yeah, you know, you might be a rag chewer on 40 meters. Okay, let's say uh, you like to talk about the weather and you like to talk about your antenna setup and you talk to a group of guys and that's what you do uh, for your ham radio experience. That's what you like to do. That's fine, but she might not like to do that. First of all, I can sympathize because women don't like the technical stuff. They don't want to talk about what antenna they have. They might not even know. So let's open the horizons here and maybe she might find another aspect of ham radio that she absolutely loves. I have a really good friend. Her name is Jane and her call sign is KA0USA. Now she's in her 70s, you guys. The only mode she likes to use is PSK31. I, I think it's the cutest thing ever, but <laughs> she does it because she doesn't have to worry about getting intimidated by a bunch of people coming in to want to talk to a YL, which is understandable. She 
wants to be able to have documented the call signs that she's actually working and she doesn't have to remember those call signs shouting out at her over HF or something like that. So uh, just keep in mind that those are all really great. Those are great things that we need to all of us take a take a little note in. Uh, But I think the main thing is that uh, we have to understand that uh, the shack belongs to both people in the house. And uh, as I tell so many, the best thing to do is to get her on HF, not just uh, VHF. Let her talk to somebody around the world or across the pond and uh, some of those nets. And uh, you know how that goes. You get on some of your 40 meter nets and it's uh, it's really refreshing to, to hear you guys and gals on there together. That's cool, Amanda. It really is. And actually women just, when they manage to break through a pile up, to, to see the beaming glow on a female after they do that is just something else. That's I mean, right. you can't break our pride because we're walking around all happy and go lucky for a week at least. So, and one other thing, you guys, she might really get into the point that she can follow your butt on APRS. She can track you wherever you go. But tell her that she That's can only track her, you. You want to keep you she... want to keep her on HF. <laughs> and <laughs> as I say so many times to my friends that are the couples that are uh, what's going to happen is he's going to come home to a a cold stove and a hot transmitter and that's when you know she's a dyed in a wool amateur radio operator. Well, listen, I really appreciate you bringing up some of those thoughts and uh we'll uh, we'll come back for some more uh, later on uh, in uh, some of the other programs. But thanks for doing that, Amanda. It's really nice to see you tonight. You and Jeff take care, and you got to keep us posted on that new truck, okay? Thank you, Bob. And uh, Cheryl, make sure you uh, throw in any of your own suggestions there at the end. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And contact us, you guys, if you have any questions. We're here to help. Okay. Thanks very much. All right, George, you probably have a lot to add, but oh boy, we're running so short of time tonight. Um, but we want to get um, get more into your soft rock project and uh, see what you you built. A, was it you built a driver this week? Let's see what you got cooking, George, for your smoking solder. Well, I actually built the driver and the PA stage this week. So the only thing that's really left to be done is to test it and uh, possibly build a low pass filter for it. So let's get on into the video. This week on Smoke and Solder, it's part eight of the Softrock RXTX Ensemble Build at Home series. We're going to build the TX mixer and the driver and the PA stage. Now we've got a lot to do here, so let's get started. We'll begin with the TX mixer stage. Now this stage adds the TX mixer to the board and provides the modulation of the driver's output signals by the four I and Q signals from the TX op amps that we built last week. The result is a double side bend RF waveform that will be coupled into the PA stage. We only have a few surface mount components this time, so let's go ahead and do them. We're going to have 3.1 microfarad capacitors, so I'm going to mark the spots on the board where each of those go. And we have one chip, which is a MUX DMUX switch, so I'll mark pin 1 for that. Now, of course, I'm going to use the hot air method again since I'm such a big fan now. So I'll put a little of the solder paste across all the pads and then I'll position the components. Now we'll pull out the cheap hot air rework station and solder everything into place. Watch this chip. Doesn't that look like so much fun? And this is real time too after it's been warmed a little. Now I've positioned all the through hole components on the board. So we'll flip it over and solder those into position. Now we have one inductor and one transformer that are toroid wound on here. I've done that off camera since we've done this before. But a word of caution here, you're really going to need a set of tweezers when you get down here to this transformer because there's no way that you could get those wires in there otherwise. Okay, I've got all the components installed on the board now. So it's time to do a little testing. We'll insert our milliamp meter in series here, and we've got 17.7 milliamps for the current draw test. The nominal voltage is less than 35, and the author had 27.5. We're still a little under what he's reading. I finally discovered why I was consistently low on these current readings, and we'll talk about that after the next stage. 
Now, there are several pin voltage tests as well, and I did all of those, and everyone looked good on that. Now, with the TX mixer stage behind us, it's time to move on to the driver and power amplifier stages. This is the final part of our build, and it's where the excitation RF from the mixer stage is amplified and sent to the antenna. Once this stage is complete, we're ready to set up the radio for actual transceiver use. There's only three surface mount components this time, and that's 3.1 microfarad capacitors, so we'll knock them out first. Now, in the builder notes, there's a link to a page where we can get a circuit to test the BS170 FETs that we use for the driver and for the power amplifier. And it suggested that you need to get these to match as close as possible. Since we have several of the BS170s left, we'll do that and find a pair with the closest matching gate threshold voltage. Now, here's my test setup. This is a little three pin computer connector. The first two leads of this are connected together and connect to one end of a 100 ohm resistor. The other end of that resistor is connected to a 12 volt power supply. Now the third lead is connected to the negative of the power supply and we also have a clip there going to the negative lead of our voltmeter and the positive lead of the voltmeter is connected to the junction of the first two pins and the 100 ohm resistor. We'll plug the FETs into here and measure the gate threshold voltage of each one. The first one has 2.93 volts, so we'll set that in a stack and go on to the next. This one reads 2.94. After doing some testing here, I determined that you need to let these things sit in there for just a moment the value will change. We're reading 2.94 on this one and after a few moments it'll change to 2.93. So let's check our other one that we think matches it. Starts out at 2.94 after a moment 2.93. So we have a matched pair there, both reading 2.93. And let's check our third one here that we thought was close to those. Starts out at 2.93, then drops down to 2.92. So that is within 0.05 of a volt. So we'll use this one for the driver. And I'll put a mark on the top of it where I did it on the face of the others. And so now we have selected our three FETs here. You know, I've had people ask me several times, how do you know when it's time for a new soldering tip? Well, when it begins looking like this, you see how it's eaten away there? I don't have too much life left in this tip, so I better order some more right away. Our three FETs are going to mount right here on this large pad. A Q5, the driver, will go on this side and Q7 and 8 will go on the other side. Now we want to get these mounted as close to the hole here in the center as we can without overlapping it because the screw needs to go through there. And we need the flat side of the FET facing up because we're going to put a heat sink on top once we're finished. There are several through hole components that we're going to mount before we put the heat sink on, otherwise we'd never get to them. We've got a 2N2222 here. It's got a key on the side of it, and this is perhaps the most popular transistor ever made. There's a mark here on the board that shows us how to install this correctly, so we want to be sure we put it in in that orientation. There are some components like R48 here and right beside it. You can't see it, but there's C22. Some of these aren't used depending on which band you're building. I'm building the 40, 30, and 20 meter version, so those components are omitted in my case. The 2N2222 transistor has a heat sink here that needs to go on it. And at long last, I think we finally got everything installed. We've got the transformers, our RF choke, and all the through hole components. So it's time to put the heat sink over the driver and the PA FETs. So there we go, the completed Softrock RX-TX Ensemble 
Now there's some testing and some debugging left to be done, so let's take a quick look at some of that. You may remember several stages back, I mentioned I got an email and a link talking about T1 and the primary or secondary needing reversing. Well, it turns out this was only for the receive version, not the receive transmit version. Now I've crossed the primary wire here, so I'm going to have to undo that. And here's what it should look like. Now to make things even more interesting, it turns out that one set of leads on T6 should be reversed to prevent the outer of the antenna coax from being prone to common mode currents, which could cause noise pickup on receive and local emissions on transmit. I'm going to swap the secondary pair since those are longer on my unit. And here's what it looks like after I'm finished. Let's do our current drain test now with the ammeter in series. I'm measuring 17.7. Uh, the spec calls for less than 35, and our document author had 25.2. I've been consistently low on these current readings, and I missed a step. I should have the USB cable plugged in while I'm doing this. Now it comes up to 23, and that's in the range where it should be. Now this was in receive mode, so let's hook up a 50 ohm dummy load and look at the current when we check push to talk on the software. Now we're drawing almost 106 milliamps. Our document says that we should have less than 150, and the author's unit had 126.7. So we're a little bit low on current right there, and we probably should research and see if we can figure out why. I also tried to measure the output of the unit, and I'm a little bit low there as well. So I've got a little troubleshooting to do, and we'll look further into that next time when we try to transmit with the unit. And so there's a little bit left to do, a low pass filter as well. So we'll be working on that here probably in a couple of weeks. Next week, I'm going to do another trick with solder. And I don't know how it's going to turn out. You'll just have to tune in and see then. Well, we had a question for our contest last week. What is a MO? And it's not one of the three stooges that's spelled M-H-O. And what it is is a measure of conductance. It's also known as a semen. And it's a reciprocal of ohms, so it'll be one over however many ohms you've got there. And the winner of that was not chosen. Boy, it's been a busy day. I've been slaving over a hot soldering iron at a transmitter all afternoon. So I will draw one as soon as we get off the air here, and somebody will be receiving in the mail this Constructing HF Wire Antennas book from Jerry Busting. And you can get a copy of this by uh, calling your favorite ham dealer. Now, for next week, we've got another question. And what we're going to give away is a Gordon West Radio School's general class Yay. study. Yeah, it's got the uh, book and the CD both in there. And this is courtesy of Frank and the people at CheapPam.com. Thanks, Frank. And he's got a lot of other good prizes over there, too. That'll be coming up in future weeks. So I thought we'd just ask a question here right out of the general question pool. And that is, which of the following can be the result of an incorrectly adjusted speech processor? A, distorted speech. B, splatter. C, excessive background pickup. Or D, all of the above. And I bet Bob <laughs> knows the answer to that, but he's not eligible. So you send me your answer to hamnationcontest at gmail.com if you're a technician or even if you don't have a license. And we'll be happy to send you uh, Gordon's General Radio Study Guide here. And uh, one other contest that I want to slip in here real quick. I know we're about to run out of time, but this one you'll certainly want to know about. Uh, tune in and enter, and you could win by registering after each Ham Nation episode for your chance to win weekly swag from ICOM. And this is new now, automatically be entered in a monthly grand prize drawing for a free ICOM radio. Now, there's five episodes of Ham Nation during January. That means you can enter in five weekly swag drawings, and you'll automatically be entered five times in the January grand prize drawing. Uh, the radio that we're going to give away this month is the V80 Sport Radio, which meets the same military specs and IP tests as a regular V80 radio. Make the V80 Sport part of your amateur radio communications plans for emergencies or everyday use 
and to register for our weekly swag giveaway and our monthly radio contest, just go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation. Bob? All right. As usual, a great, a great production. <laughs> you, uh, you really work hard on that stuff, George, and I appreciate it. And everybody else loves what you do. So, uh, and yes, I can, uh, <laughs> I can write you books. Well, I'm writing a book. <laughs> I wrote a book. Look at this dog here. I've been working on this for several years to update it. We're, we're going to see it by Dayton, but I'm writing all new scripts. Look at all these pages. Arr. But it's, um, it's badly needed. We don't have any good technical books that we can understand that's uh, the whole deal when I brought that out in the late 70s. It was such a hit. Uh, tens of thousands of them out there, but uh, it went out of print. Well, it's going back into print, so we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, I think we better move back to Petaluma. We have a brand new sponsor. And to kick off our new sponsor, who other to do it and the best to do it, but Leo Laporte, W6TWT. So take her away, Leo. Hey, Hams, I hope you don't mind if I uh, cut in for a moment just to mention something that I'm kind of fond of. Uh, and it's not my cell company. In fact, I bet you <laughs> if you did a poll of people, most would say we don't like our cell company very much. That's why I want to tell you about Ting. Ting is a new mobile phone service that's no BS. It just makes sense. There's no contract. There's no early termination fee. You pay for what you use. No more. You don't pay a penalty for using more than you, uh, than you planned. Uh, Ting is an MVNO. They resell mobile virtual network operator, resell Sprint network. So if you've got great Sprint coverage where you are, you really ought to consider using Ting as your mobile carrier. I want you to go to... Uh, hamnation.ting.com right now. You can find out more. You buy the phone, you, you get it home, and they have a great selection of phones, including and great the best top-of-the-line Android phones like my Galaxy Note 2 that I love and highly recommend. Uh, I'm going to tell you how you can save on that in just a second. You buy the phone, Ting sends it to you, then you activate it on the Ting network, and you are getting great cell phone service, great support, and you're not paying a lot. The way Ting works is $6 per handset from one to as many as you want. That's why it's great for a family or a business. You pay 6 bucks per handset per month. That's it. Then you add on top of it the number of minutes uh, of call time, the number of text messages, and the amount of data. You pay a simple fee for that stuff. If you don't use as much, they rebate you the difference. If you use more... You pay at the same rate. There's no bonus, you know, penalty for, for using more data. Uh, it's very affordable and very reasonable. In fact, if you go to Ting and uh, use the calculator, go to triangular, or sorry, hamnation.ting.com right now, and you can use the calculator there and, f and compare this to your actual uh, phone bill. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example uh, right now here. Let's, let's uh, well, I'll, I'll go back to the plans section here. You choose the uh, number of phones you want. Let's let's uh, you know. Let's use a reasonable example. Let's say your family of four, twenty-four bucks a month for the phone. Uh, you're going to use a thousand minutes a month. Notice if you use less, they'll rebate the difference. If you use more, they'll uh, you pay the difference. And it's all very straightforward. Eighteen dollars for a thousand minutes. Um, I think a thousand text messages a month for five bucks. That's a good deal. And we'll say you go crazy on data. That's three thousand uh, megabytes, three gigabytes. A a, a month of data. That total cost for four phones and all of that, $107 a month. And $107 a month for the whole family. What are you paying now for a family of four? And you get voicemail, picture and video messaging, three-way calling, caller ID, tethering and hotspot as well for free. So this is a really great solution. There's no contract. There's no early termination fee. There's no bundling or ride-along services. You don't pay any overage charges or penalties if you use more. No big deal. You get credit on what you don't use. So, you you know, you could start with 000 if you want and only pay for what you use. You could start with the max to budget and then uh, get a rebate for the stuff you don't use. It's still very, very affordable. Uh, and I love that you get everything for free. There's no, you know, the, the, like the hotspot. That is great. I use that all the time. No mysterious line items on your bill. Unlimited devices on a plan. Uh, you get a credible dashboard that lets you control 
uh, how you're using it, what you're using, and see what you've been doing. Um, and this customer support's fantastic. Call them at 855-TING-FTW anytime during business hours, and a real person will pick up the phone, and they guarantee you will not be put on, on hold. Plus, if you go to help.ting.com, you'll see they have great help forums, very active, a great ticketing system, video tutorials, a startup guide, an FAQ, uh, everything you need. This is the, mo the, the, the this is the folks at Two Cows. You know them. Elliot Noss's philosophy is we're going to move into businesses like Hover for domain name registration, where it's just done terribly, and we can do it better by using modern technology to give you great customer service and support. Ting is fantastic. Please try it. Save money and get great service. Hamnation.ting.com. And when you buy, if you use the offer code Hamnation, $25 off your handset. Good deal. Hamnation.ting.com and save $25 on your first Ting device. I think you'll like it. Ting is the thing. Now back to the hams in Ham Nation. Thanks, Leo, and really nice to have a new sponsor. That's wonderful, and I hope that all of you will uh, take take advantage of that. Uh, that's a great offer, and it sounds terrific to me because, uh, oh, boy, we need some good service on that. And uh, as you guys know, I, I, I've I found the service for Internet when we're out here in the sticks, and that's this Viasat. Man, it just works so good. I'm really thrilled that uh, we're able to solve that problem. Well, let's go up to Illinois. We got, oh, boy, we got, we're way over. A couple of minutes, so let's go see what we can do for a couple of minutes up in Illinois. How, how are you doing, and how are things in good old Illinois? Uh, Cheryl, nice to see you tonight. Hey. Good evening. Hi, Bob. Hi, everybody. I just thought we'd do a, a quick tidbit and, and perhaps a nugget. I'll, I'll have to pick one of these. Um, let's see. Oh, this is one that keeps coming up from Mike, um, Bob. It's VE3MIC Mike. I'm just curious, is, is he pulling my leg or is this a real question? He says, um, last week, Bob was discussing wire and cable quality. I know you remember you were doing that. And he was wondering if there is any real advantage to OFC. Is there such a thing as OFC, wire, or cable? And that means, from him, oxygen-free copper. Is that real, or is he just joshing? Well, I think it's all a marketing joke, and sometime I'll have to give you a, a full report on... Uh, I, w I work was working with Adobe Labs back when I was doing all the home theater and satellite stuff in the late 70s and 80s. We did quite a test on wire, all of this $100 a foot wire 16 foot, uh, 16 gauge uh, lamp cord works just as well. I know, I know, you're all going to poop me <laughs> on it. Well, we did a test at Dolby and proved it. <laughs> 16 gauge lamp cord is fine. Wow. That's <laughs> all. So, well, marketing we is that. a wonderful thing, Cheryl. Marketing is a wonderful thing. Oh, of course, of course, always. And George, one last quick question for you from N3JPW. That's Mark. He wanted to know. Why do solder tips disintegrate? Oops. I think it's probably the heat oh, oh. and uh, possibly some of the acidic qualities of the chemicals that you're putting on there. And and then you're working with electronics, you know, you're scraping metal and stuff. But uh, Or you could say it's just planned obsolescence. I don't know. <laughs> but I will second what Bob said. I recently read an article in one of the audio magazines where uh, they had a bunch of these golden ears in a conference room and they tried some of this $100 foot cable and they tried some barbed wire and uh, a lot of them rated the barbed wire sounding better. <laughs> All right. I love it. <laughs> barbed wire for your speakers. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, hey, Bob, can you answer this real quick, quickly? Because a lot of times people always ask, where can, he, where can they buy the... The Gordon West books. I get that all the time, and I just thought maybe it would be a great idea if you could, uh, you know, give a good place of where to get the Gordon West books. Well, your stores, all, uh, like HRO, and uh, those stores have them. Uh, always uh, write an email to Gordo if you're in a town that doesn't have a store with him. He can help you, but I, I think... Uh, most all of the uh, dealers have his books. I see them as I go into the stores, uh, so check that out. And uh, if you uh, drop Gordo a line, uh, why, he can give you some things probably online to buy them also. And doesn't he have his own website then pretty much? Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Oh, and he can. That's right. 
Frank started carrying his book. That's right. Go to cheapan.com. Frank's a great dealer. If you guys don't know about Cheap Ham, check it out. Frank has Excellent. really, uh, really come on, and uh, he's he's got uh, he's got the books. There you go. And one last quick one, if I could, for um, for you, George. Uh, we have Tom K F four U T H. He says, in the future, will you make a sweet sixteen on the air for us? He's sa he's saving a bunch of small speakers for the project. So if you wanna, <laughs> you know, maybe consider that. I'm not sure, but I said I'd ask for him anyway. So. Well, you know, I've had that in mind for a while, and I don't have uh, 16 good speakers. However, I build computers, and I have saved up 16 little uh, piezo speakers from some computer cases, and I'm going to put all those together one day and just see what it sounds like. I, I don't expect much, though. <laughs> Great, thanks. And one one quick comment. I just wanted to answer Amanda on her on her segment. Thanks for that that segment you did, Amanda. I I just wanted to comment on what I saw in the chat room, and it's true. Just tell tell the wife or girlfriend what are you going to do when your cell phone doesn't work anymore? You need to, to possibly get a license. The, 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 the radios always work. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. You have a great evening. 73 from Love Northeastern it. Illinois. <laughs> Love Take it, Cheryl. Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I want to keep on uh, track of where everybody is. Well, this has been so much fun as always tonight. And uh, pass the word on to your club members and so on. And keep in mind that George and and uh, Gordon and I, we, we do not, not at the same time, but we do um, uh, clubs meetings. I'm doing uh, three of them this week. And with Skype, what you're seeing right here that George and Gordo and I use, it's wonderful. We can visit your club meetings anytime and the cost is zero. But boy, what kind of programming can you get to have Gordon West come in and talk to you for an hour? It's it's really fun. And uh, uh, I, I I hasten all of you that are in clubs. Uh, we've got to we've got to bolster these club meetings. They, they shouldn't be boring, and they, you should be drawing crowds. You should be increasing the number of people that uh, come to your club meetings. But got to do something interesting and uh, use the Ham Nation platform to do it. It's really great. So. That's the story for this week. Next week is going to be that Central Electronics History lesson. I am really excited about next week. So tune in, tell everybody, uh, and, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks to John and Carson and everybody back in Petaluma because a lot of them are at CES. So uh, kind of running in there, running with the new crowd tonight. I think John's got a couple of other things there too. So, John, thank you so much. Arston, thanks for uh, all you do. And thanks to all of our people that make this happen every week, and especially Leo Laporte to give us the bandwidth and the production facilities. Next week, we will see you right here. Just put Ham Nation into Google, and we're here. So 7-3, everybody. We'll talk on 40 meters here in just a little bit. I got it warmed up, and uh, it's working really well. So... Uh, Get in there and let her roll. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll be there shortly. Bye bye for now. Seven three from K nine E I D.